Hello everyone. So, the story of Cinderella, it's a tale as old as time. Wait a minute! Hold it, hold it, hold it! What are you doing, Megan? I'm starting the review! You can't just do that! Listen, you owe me. You left me out of the last three reviews. I don't owe you anything, my dear sister. Maybe we should start this video before you lose any more subscribers. Fine. Anyway, as I was saying, before I was so rudely interrupted, the story of Cinderella is a tale as old as time. Oh wait, that's, that's the wrong film, isn't it? No, duh. Although, Cinderella is older than Beauty and the Beast by 122 years, give or take little. Anyway, the 1950 Disney film is considered one of the best versions of the story, despite people being divided about whether or not the story sends a good message. However, there's no deny that this film is a classic. So naturally, Disney has decided to make a live-action version of their film, with Lily James as Cinderella and Gilderoy Lockhart serving as our director. You know, when it comes to Disney making live-action versions of their old films, they all did well financially while they could have fared better critically. So, will Cinderella be the fairy godmother to Disney's live-action department? Or should they lock up the rest of their ideas never to be seen again? Let's find out. Welcome to the third season of Short and to the Point, where he reviews movies in five minutes or less, or your money back. All right, Megan, I'll take it from here. What? Just start the opening montage. With pleasure. begin with some of the negatives. First of all, some of the most recognizable moments from the source material can come across as bullet point versions in this movie, such as the scene with the fairy godmother. It's had a rather rushed pace to it, but Tolina Bonham Carter did a good job with her line delivery, and when the scene slowed down, it really was magical. The same can be said for the death of Cinderella's mother. She kind of just gets sick out of nowhere and is dead less than a couple of scenes later. The movie is also narrated from start to finish, even during scenes where the audience could probably figure out what is going on on their own. It's kind of annoying, especially since everybody and their grandmother knows how most of the story plays out, but that's mostly a nitpick all things considered. The movie also suffers from ending fatigue due to expanding on plot points from the source material, thus increasing the runtime as a result. That being said, I did like some of the story expansions for these characters. Cinderella, for example, puts up with her stepmother's cruelness because her real mother taught her to always be courageous and kind. Lily James' acting makes it clear that Cinderella's kindness is not an informed attribute, and she does look like the kind of person that will let Lady Tremaine, her stepmother, walk all over her. However, we can see that she is barely holding it together, and you just want to root for her to hang on. We also get to see Cinderella with her parents for a short while, and they have a good relationship with one another. Cinderella is even willing to let her father remarry, and the nervousness he displays when asking Cinderella for her permission was one of my favorite moments in the film. As for Lady Tremaine, believe it or not, she actually is slightly sympathetic in this film. 
Granted, she is still as cruel as ever to Cinderella, but it is not for no good reason, so to speak, and Kate Blanchett did a good job capturing the many different personalities that Lady Tremaine displayed throughout this film. One of my favorite moments of acting from her came during the scene where she overhears Cinderella and her father talking about her mother. It's a brief moment, but Lady Tremaine looks hurt when she hears what they have to say, before immediately and seamlessly putting on another face as if she hadn't heard a thing. Now, I don't have a lot of time to talk about The Prince, played by Richard Madden, but I will say that I did like his first meeting with Cinderella. You can understand why he would be intrigued by her and would want to meet her again after their first meeting, and of course, their very first dance is well shot. And last but not least, the actresses that play these stepsisters have a good sense of comedic timing. Another plus for this film is its effects. While some of them are questionable, such as the CGI for the mice, Others are a dazzling sight to behold, especially what we see with the fairy godmother. Something else that is also dazzling is this movie's vibrant color scheme and costumes. They really helped the film come to life. Speaking of coming to life, the mice display a high level of sentience in this movie, and I was kind of mixed on that. Because on one hand, the comedic hijinks the mice get into as a result of this are fun to watch, especially when they come at Lucifer's expense. On the other hand, the other animals don't share the same level of sentience, and Cinderella treats the sight of seeing the mice eating at their own small table as an everyday occurrence. There's no real explanation given for this, we are meant to just go with it. Then again, the film features a fairy godmother, so who am I to judge? <laughs> at the very least, the mice do not detract from the overall story. So overall, I think Cinderella was a satisfying film. It's not groundbreaking or anything, but it was well acted with some good production values and welcome changes to the source material that weren't too drastic. It could have used better pacing in certain areas, but I'm going to give it 7.5 surprisingly comfortable glass slippers out of a possible 10, and I do recommend it for a theatrical viewing. Though if you see it in theaters, just go with somebody that you can get to pay for your ticket. This has been Short and To The Point, and I review movies in 5 minutes or less, or your money back. Review? Yep. So now what? I know. You wanna watch Beauty and the Beast? Sure, why not? Hey, have you heard that Emma Watson is going to be playing Belle in the upcoming live action adaptation of the story? <laughs> I can just see it now. I'm very sorry, Gaston, but but I just don't deserve you. You foul and loathe some evil little oh, 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 Malfoy, oh, you're okay. Oh. Oof. No one gets punched quite like Gaston. You know, the entire movie would be worth it if she does punch him out. So anyway, we will see you all next time. Bye. At least I hope we'll see me next time. <laughs>